Good afternoon. I'm delighted to welcome you all to, this, to the first series um, of webinars with our, one of our head um, line sponsors, um, Le Grand Assisted Living and Healthcare. <clears throat> this is a great opportunity to hear from Chris Dodd, the Managing Director, about how they've been coping with COVID-19. We're in week 11 now, and it all seems like it's a bit of the normal. Um, our tech sector has been really fantastic in being agile and flexible and reactive to make sure that we're delivering really fantastic safe services. But it'll be really interesting for us to know from one of from Legrand, one of the market leaders, about how they've supported you um, as providers um, and what, what they see will be the future for us as we start to see some recovery and rebuilding our sector. So over to you, Chris, and um, welcome. It'd be great for you to just share with us what the pandemic's meant for Legrand and what's your position as a business? Okay, good afternoon, Alison, and uh, thank, thank, you, thank you for inviting me along to, uh, to give you a little bit of an insight into our world. Um, I think the first thing to say is, uh, is this virus is, is a terrible thing, and uh, my heart goes out to anyone that's been impacted by it, and especially to those that uh, might have uh, lost uh, loved ones or, or friends. Uh, or, as a, as a consequence of the pandemic. I think uh, as we work alongside the health and social care sectors, it gives us a little bit of an insight as to how hard people work uh, in supporting the elderly and the vulnerable. And I have the greatest respect for, for those that are working on the, the, the front line in the, the fight against uh, COVID at this time. Um, I think given, given that uh, we, we provide technology solutions to uh, to help our customers support the, the elderly and the vulnerable. We always knew that we were going to have to step up um, to help them in uh, in support of uh, the, the, this fight against uh, COVID. And uh, you know, to start that journey, the, the first thing that we had to consider was how we could continue um, ourselves to operate uh, effectively and, and efficiently. And our manufacturing unit up in uh, the northeast of England in, in Blythe. I mean, our colleagues there have worked admirably during this period. The manufacturing facility has remained open. Um, we've also obviously had to make some significant adjustments um, to, in, to ensure safe working, um, whether that be social distancing, whether it be regular sanitization, adjusting shift patterns, temperature checks for people coming in, amongst many other things um, that we've had to do. Uh, and also for our back off office colleagues, um, they successfully transitioned from, from coming into the office every day to, to working from home and, and continue to do so very successfully. And then for our field engineers, uh, we've had to adjust our uh, risk assessment processes and our method statements to ensure that they could continue to support our customers uh, should they require any uh, field maintenance or, or rectification uh, services as required. And our business development managers, like all of us, have had to embrace uh, video calling. So they've continued to, uh, to, to help with the product demonstrations and training and, and support from our customers using, using these, these, these techniques. Um, at the start, uh, which it seems like such a long time ago now, such a lot has happened uh, along the way, um, we did get numerous requests from uh, alarm uh, uh, call receiving centres to help them deploy uh, their resources, their, their people, their co-receiving co uh, uh, staff to, to home. And uh, very quickly where we could, we were able to uh, install, configure technology to, to allow that to happen, largely remotely, which was, uh, which was useful. And we also pr produced a range of videos to, to, to help our customers, uh, with customers now trying, with, with uh, operators now trying to log on from home um, and also uh, for, for new operators coming coming to the service maybe in that time and also for our applications, uh, our call reassurance applications and uh, call, call minding applications so they could understand how best to get the benefits from, 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 from those. Um, at the same time, we, we saw a significant increase in demand for our digital reach IP units um, in, in uh, which are largely plug and play devices, so they're very easy to install. 
Um, they were particularly useful in discharge to from hospital to home programs, which um, in normal circumstances might have required an installer and a, or an advisor to, uh, to, to make equipment operational in the home. But in most cases, people were very easy very easily able to, to take the equipment, plug it in when they, uh, they arrived home, and it downloaded its configuration from the cloud, and then the, uh, the service provider could continue to, to, to monitor and manage that. So that, that, that was a, a, a big step up for us. Um, and for sheltered accommodation, um, where many people are shielding, uh, many elderly and, and vulnerable people are shielding um, within those environments, um, we're using uh, our reach units to ensure resilience. Um, where people weren't able to allow engineering staff in, into their own home, we can provide uh, our reach units again, which are easy to, to deploy in such circumstances. So much so that uh, we've seen for the first time uh, dig digital alarm unit cells, our reach alarm unit cells exceed those of the, the more traditional analog devices. So, so that was very interesting to see. On the health care side of the business, um, understandably, um, this has been impacted. We've seen a reduced number of installations into care homes, but we continue to support and main maintain um, uh, individuals. Uh, systems as, as best we can in the circumstances and for the NHS uh, with our nurse call systems we've supported the increase in capacity uh, whether bringing new systems new wards into operation or expanding existing wards and we've also installed our systems into some of the uh, uh, new Nightingale food hospital uh, environments uh, particularly at the Dragon's Heart facility in Cardiff and in, and in Liverpool so, all in all, you know, incredibly proud of the the way our team teams have, have stepped up to the to the challenge. Uh, one particular example out of out of many, um, which was which was with regard to a, a Nightingale a facility, uh, uh, where we received the inquiry one Tuesday night back in early April. Um, the, the the team got together, reviewing the specification, putting the quote together submitted that next day. Um, we received the, uh, the order um, that afternoon. Uh, colleagues in the, in the factory got their equipment together. We were on site on, on Thursday and the installation was uh, completed and handed over by the, the Saturday afternoon. So a sort of four days start to start finish. So we've been incredibly busy during this period, much more so than uh, we, we ever thought we, we would be or, or would have been in normal, normal circumstances, I think. Fantastic. And um, I don't know whether you're aware, but our new director in Scotland is Dr. Lane Douglas. She's the CEO of Beagled Housing. Um, she, she fed back about how supportive you've been and ensuring that her whole business actually were deployed at home and home working was in and introduced very, very quickly, including the monitoring centre. And she said the performance has been absolutely fantastic. The support she received was really brilliant um, so that they could get the, the whole monitoring staff functioning effectively, safely from home. So well done, Chris. That, that, that's really fabulous. Yeah, that, that's think, great to hear. Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I personally think, you know, we've all done well as a sector. And what we did, our leadership report last year said, Let's look at digital, let's look at workforce, let's look at data, and but more importantly, let's look at partnerships. And I think what we've seen over the last 11 weeks is our sector put together to deliver fantastic services that we need and that business continuity. But I'm interested, I know I joined some of your breakfast seminars last year, which I found really yeah. important. And uh, I'm aware that you launched it in January uh, your white paper, Unleashing the Digital Premium. Now, that's about us looking into the future, and I'm really keen to know what that will give us as a sector and how you'll use the insight to drive things forward for our, for our mm. sector and our clients. Mm. Um, yeah, no, and, and th th thanks for the feeding back those comments. Um, with regard to the, the white paper, you know, we were incredibly pleased to be able to support the, the Good Governance Institute in the, the preparation of this, this national white paper. Um, and it really did dig into some of the, the, the challenges and opportunities um, in making this, trans this transition towards digital and what, what could be the benefits. In, uh, and we, we call that the digital premium. Um, and I think, I think it's important that we do realise something beneficial out of this, this, this technology change. 
Um, as you said, the, the paper was a, a combination of a, a number of uh, sessions, face-to-face -face sessions with colleagues across health, housing and social care, um, and also a, a number of uh, interviews uh, with, with people across, across the sector. So a great deal of insight uh, was, was gained throughout the process and uh, brought together within the, the white paper. And as you say, we, we launched that uh, in the House of Lords uh, earlier, earlier this year. I think for us, the, the thing I'm always conscious of that any technology shift, um, like this analog to, to digital shift, can be seen by many as just another expense. Um, it's just a, a new technology and there's no real gain or benefit over the existing the existing technology. So we were re really keen to explore the potential that digital can actually bring and to, to be able to, 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 to examine some of the opportunities, to, to look at what challenges there may be in realizing those, those, those opportunities and how they could overcome. So that, that, was, that was the real purpose of, of, of the paper. Um, I think you know, we all know much is spoken about analog to the technology shift. Um, we, we, we know the size of the UK uh, market, the tech sector in the UK. This was never going to be uh, an overnight process. It was, it was something that had to be, to be planned and, and, and thought through and uh, executed in an, in an appropriate way. But we're excited, really excited by this, this new dawn. Um, we're excited by some of, some of the opportunities that uh, have been examined within the white paper. Um, and again, you know, some of some of the things are to hand. You know, we all know there's a wealth of data that, that we, we we collect uh, across the services that uh, that are provided. But how do we better share those that that that, that data? How do we uh, make better, more informed decisions um, to improve the welfare of individuals and the quality of life for for, for the people that, that are supported? I mean, the the the, the paper cap captured a number of challenges, but it also uh, looked looked at some of uh, some 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 real good practice where people were overcoming those challenges and already using uh, digital to, to to best effect. I mean, the, the the UK is in transition. I think there's no doubt about that. We're in a transition phase from analog to digital. I think the important thing is that uh, everyone has a plan, you know, whether, whether it be ourselves in terms of a provider of technology solutions, whether it's an organization providing services or wherever you sit, you need to have a plan and you need to be uh, assured that you're, you're executing that, 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 that plan. I think the important thing within the paper um, was, was really the last page um, where it threw out some challenges to the, the boards um, within our health, uh, housing and social care sectors. So posed some, some, some really uh, insightful questions uh, for boards to consider uh, as, as, they, as, they, as they move through, through this, this period of change. And I, if anybody's interested in, in reading the paper, paper in more detail, it can be downloaded from, from the Time Tech uh, uh, website just to search for unleash, unleashing the digital premium. So yeah, I, th I think it was a, a really important piece of work and, and very timely, as you say. Absolutely, and I think I think over the series of the next webinars, um, over the next twelve months, we'll be able to talk through some of your delivery um, things that you're developing. But it's, we're mm -hmm. all creating the new norm. What will the new norm look like for technology-enabled care? And I think there's some key things in the paper that we can work on um, together um, to get that out to the sector. I'm delighted that you're focusing on the boards because digital mm -hmm. is a key strategic risk that should be on everybody's risk register. Um, and mm -hmm. together, it would be great for us to get those messages out to our colleagues mm -hmm. and help housing and social care so they actually know what those what the challenges are but more importantly what the opportunities are so thanks for that great piece of work chris and i'm really keen to follow, okay. the, follow that with you over the, the coming months um we've talked mm -hmm. a bit about digital and you've said mm -hmm. that you know, that's been the priority over the last few months and we've talked a lot about that date of 2000, um, 2025 I think we're all seeing that our public push, where our consumers, the shielding, they're all using digital, and it is going mm. to be the norm. I'm just wanting mm. you to maybe tell us how ready are, are you for it, 
and, and what plans do you have in place for supporting all of your customers, not just the ones that have been reaching out for the digital? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think in terms of you know where Melo Grand is at this moment in time, we've been investing heavily for for a number of years um, in our technology platforms. Um, we, we've transitioned all of our technology platforms from analytics to digital. They're all digitally capable at, at, the, at this moment in time. Um, I think another another part of this um, we've seen through the British Standards Institute. We've seen recently the, the publication of, of two important digital uh, communication protocols. One particularly for the uh, alarm units, uh, the dispersed alarm units, as we as we describe them, and uh, one for the equipment used in specialised uh, group living environments, sheltered accommodation, uh, that, those, those types of things. So I think they, they, they were very important milestones in this journey. Um, they're now published. Um, they're, we've now adopted them within all of our uh, equipment as, as appropriate. And I think you know, often we see standards as lagging behind the technology shift. And, and we see you know, standards be slow, slow to, to, to respond to, to changes in technology. But here, I think we've seen clear leadership uh, supported by the, the TSA in bringing forward these, these, this, this framework uh, for interoperability that uh, allows technology from, from whatever the source to, to, to in, interact and, 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 op and operate seam seamlessly together. So I think that's important. And I think the, the other thing is this, this, is not, uh, this is not the status quo. This, this is going to change. Needs are going to change. Needs are going to evolve. And again, through the, uh, the BSR, we, we have a, uh, a framework now for the protocols to evolve as in, as the needs change. So I think I think that was a very important step. And uh, I think you know for the sector, we, you know, lots of people involved in that process. Uh, we should we should be very pleased pleased that, that that's that's now done and dusted, and we can move forward from that. Um, in terms of the other aspects, um, we should all, always be mindful of security. Uh, whenever we bring uh, forward any, any new technologies. And analog technology, you know, despite its limitations, has served us well for, for, for many, many years. Um, so, uh, you know, let, let's, let's ensure that we protect the, the gains that we have made as we move into this, this, new, te this new technology age, this new di digital technology platforms. And what, we, what we've done um, with, with Intine Tech and, and John Tech is we, we've created a, a secure uh, ecosystem um, for for our products and to operate and for our customers to access the, the the benefits, whether that be devices using mobile networks, whether it's devices using fixed wired networks, or whether it's even devices using both types of networks. So people people can be confident in the fact that we we have a resilient, secure secure network in in which uh, the equipment can can operate. Also, you know these these are this is, there's great learnings learnings here as well. And we do have a team of um, experts uh, within the business and partners who are, are there to to be able to uh, assist um, our customers in, in supporting them in, in making making this 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 transition and also you know the white paper we, we were very keen not to lose track of uh, the fact that we've got this white paper now we've got a number of uh, challenges thrown out by the white paper and the fact that we we need to to build on that and, and to take that forward uh, as, 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 as we move into the into this digital phase fantastic as you know quality outcomes in our quality framework is it goes right to the heart of mm -hmm. everything and TSA and tech quality and and let's continue. Yes, security yeah. is important. Quality outcomes, standards. We need to align everything. Yeah. And I, yes, yeah. we've done, but there's still some others. There's other developments that we need to progress with. So let's continue our joint working. Mm. We're looking forward to the new Chris, and you know, um, as we come out of our business continuity stages and we start to look at rebuilding the sector, our government's telling us that we're in this for the long haul. It's likely to come in mm -hmm. and then rebuild. From your mm -hmm. perspective, what, what, what does the new world of tech look like? What do you aspire it to be? That would be great. Wow. That's, that's, a, that's a big, big, big question. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it, it, going, going back to the white paper, I think it was, uh, in some respects, it was summed up very well by Jeremy Porteous, 
the chief executive of the Housing uh, Learning Improvement Network, um, where he, he said something along along the lines of, um, you know, providers have now the opportunity to think about how the, how they can ch change the way they win interact with residents. Um, the more tra traditional model of uh, re reacting to events, re reacting to a crisis and intervening at that point, they can move to, to being data gatherers um, so they can capture data that will inform uh, the services that they, they, they offer. Um, they, they can move to being data sharers so they can share information with other agencies, with other organisations to, to ensure better outcomes for, for individuals. And you know, they can data assist, um, they can provide information um, that might lead to uh, interventions uh, beforehand, um, which might, might uh, avoid things happening um, that, other, that otherwise uh, might, might have led, led to a crisis. So you know, as, as we move forward um, and the launch of our digital systems, we, we're hoping that some, some of these things can become a reality. Um, certainly with the ability now to capture data continuously, uh, we're no longer reliant on dial-up telephone networks. Um, using you know, modern techniques, machine learning algorithms and, and, and data, we can, we can start to think about how we might have solutions that predict things um, and with a suitable intervention, um, a crisis could be avoided. You know, the one that I speak a lot about is, is falls. Now, falls, and as we all know, are not always just a consequence of a trip hazard or, a, or an accident or stumble of some kind, they can be uh, as a result of a long deterioration in a, in a condition of, of some, some kind. They, they're not always signaled by a, a single factor. You know, they, they might come about by the lack of movement, people having to sit in the chair for a long period of time, um, the lack of nutrition or hydration or over or under medication. And with other data source, other data sources, um, they this this information combined might be able to, to to give us an indication that something's likely to happen in the near future. And again, with that suitable intervention, that um, we, we, it can be avoided, which is a, obviously of a great benefit to the individual, but also to the whole health economy. Um, you know, whether that be specifically in health or whether it be in social care. Um, it, it's, it's, it's very, very important. And I think also, you know, this goes hand in hand. We need to think about how our services will transition. You know, this is going to require a transformation in service, service delivery, moving from the, the, the reactive to the proactive. We'll never lose the reactive requirement, but uh, we need to think about how, how we re going to react to such information uh, in the future. So again, you know, that goes back to some of the questions uh, which are posed in the white paper to boards. You know, are they thinking about how best to engage all stakeholders in their digital in their digital strategy? So I think yes, some um, some 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 more some important food for thought that, that that came out from that from that quote from Jeremy there. Fantastic. And I think um, what it, what COVID has given us is a huge opportunity to be relevant, more relevant. Mm. In population health service delivery and I think we're seeing that up and down the country where our services are, are being used with, to support the shielding so the most vulnerable but also the tracking and the tracing and, and it's our time. I truly believe being in the sector for over 20 years this is our time. We've banged the drums for a long time saying tech works, tech delivers really great outcomes. Yep. Yep. This is our time to, to yeah. really show how we're really relevant and important in that whole system. So I would just mm -hmm. like to thank you today, Chris, um, but more importantly, thank your whole team at Legrand because what you've done is you've allowed a lot of organisations to, one, survive, be sustainable, and continu continue to deliver those fabulous services. So without you... I think some of them would have struggled. So I'm sure from all mm -hmm. our service providers out there, a great, huge thank you is well deserved. Mm -hmm. And I'm absolutely mm -hmm. looking forward to our next, you know, engagement, our next contribution to see how your white paper comes into reality. Um, so until next mm -hmm. time, thank you very much, Chris.
Yeah, and, and, and thank, thank you, Alison. That that's that that's, that that's very kind of you. And I, I think I just 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 one thing I'd like to say at the end. I think you know we we've had an insight, um, and you know if we take anything from COVID, it's given us the opportunity to to, to see some of the benefits that digital could give us. I think let's hope that you know COVID goes away now and we never see it again. But you know, let should there be a resurgence, let's ensure we take this opportunity within an intervening period, if it is to come back in the winter, to accelerate those programs. Uh, I think the, the last thing that we'd want to do is is go back in back into this uh, in the winter period, uh, being unprepared. So let's let's take the opportunity now to to, to move forward as, as much as we can in that time. But thank you very much, Alison, for the opportunity to. Uh, to, to well speak, done, and good luck. Today. Good luck with all your developments over the summer. Um, and we'll keep in touch and we'll keep feeding this back to the, the sector um, and support them on their yeah. journey. Um, well done, thank you. Thank you.